So, all right, so what I want you to do is I want you to take out a sheet of paper. So as we go forward each time we're doing it, the stuff we already had, I go a little bit more in detail. All right, because you're obviously repeating yourself at home, right? You're studying this a little bit, right? Right? Yeah, that's what I thought. There you go. That's what I thought. So, term number one, I want you to tell me on the skull, we got the front, the face, the back, the back of the head, on the occipital bone, there is a bump, a big bump, right here. Writes down what that bump is called. That's number one. The big bump in the back of the head. Then number two, I'm gonna open up the skull. Look inside the skull, like right there. Front is here, on the bottom. The back is here on the top. Looking right in, in the middle, no, no, let's do the hole first. In the middle, there's a big hole. Write down what that hole is called. The big hole, that's where the spinal cord goes up and down. Actually, the brain stem goes through the big hole. And then right in front of the big hole, there's an indentation that has a gland sitting in it, the pituitary gland. What is that thing called? It's number three. We'll do this a few times, you'll know it, because we'll talk about it some more. All right, so that's pretty good. So then I want to go to the pelvis, and actually, let me take this, because on the test I use this to do the pelvis stuff. I don't use the long spine for that. But on the pelvis, we have the back here, and we have the front here. Um, I want you to tell me what we call that big bump in the back of the pelvis. So it's a big bump in the back of the butt right here that you can feel, and that's right here. What is that called? Write that down, that was number four, right? And then we have on the side of the hip, we got a big sort of cup holding thing, which is where the femur goes into, the thigh bone, right there, goes into that. What is that called? That joint making deep indentation. It's good because if that were flatter and not as deep, we would always dislocate this hip. That wouldn't work out well. You can see that in people who have a, a little bit of, what's this called? Let's do that. What, what number are we on? Six? That was five. That was five? So let's do six now. As we get to the femur, there is this round stuff that fits into number five. What is that called, number six? And you know, hey, anything that's round like that is most likely called something like that, all right? We need to find the commonalities in this terminology, otherwise it goes crazy. So let's just finish up with the thigh here, number seven. Uh, on the thigh, we have a big bump on the outside. That's this big bump here. If you, somebody kicks you, it really hurts because the bone is right, right underneath the skin and you have a lot of muscles going in this. What's this called? big bump on the outside of the thigh. And then we go to the knee, and if we go to the bottom bone, the big one, there's two, one that's skinny on the side, and it's it's not like twisted like this, it's, kind of, it's straight, this is plastic, so. But we have one that's really the weight-bearing thing, bringing the weight down, and then the outside bone is kind of stabilizing, and we don't fall out back to the side all the time, um, kind of thing. And then on the big bone, that's the tibia. The big bone is the tibia. There's a bump in front of the tibia there. And that's where all these thigh muscles go in. Or actually when you kneel, you kneel right on that thing. You go right on that, that thing, because I, I know it really hurts on me because I went down too hard with my dog. So that big bump, I want you to tell me what that is. That was number eight, right? Yeah. Good. And then number nine, let's go a little bit to the shoulder blade or the upper extremities. So this here is a left shoulder blade. So when you look, or left arm, when you look at the shoulder blade on, the, on one side, you have this big ridge, on the other side is flat. What is this big ridge called? What's the name of that? 
and then we go to the arm bone, the humerus, and on the arm bone, on the outside, there's a roughage, like mid shaft. And it's this muscle here, this big muscle that goes around the, well, the shoulder, I call it the shoulder pad muscle, is, is attached to that thing. And it then moves the arm up and side, forward a little and to the back. And so it's right here. It's, it's not really that visible, but you can feel it. So what's that called? That's number 10. And then number 11, let's finish at number 11. When you look at the elbow, there is this bone that has a hook from the sides. So it hooks in. That's actually why you can't extend the elbow more than 90, 180 degrees, or you shouldn't. You can it, but then it cracks, and that's really not that great. Uh, what's that thing called? The prop, that's the tip of the elbow, really, at the end of the day. It's the tip of the elbow. What's that thing called? That's number 11, I believe. All right, good. Now you get to talk and I get to, hmm? What was number one? Anybody else? Well, there you go. External, occipital, protuberance. Say it. External occipital protuberance. You gotta speak this stuff, otherwise it never comes out right. And then what was number two? Foramen magnum. Foramen magnum. And again, you have a right to pronounce this stuff the way you want because when you go to Europe and to Germany and you hear the English pronunciation, you go like, holy cow. Or when I go to Europe, and they speak this anatomy term like, is this really, is this what they're saying? Or is that what they're saying? And then you adapt. So, the, 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 so don't be afraid if you think it sounds wrong when you say it. Just do it. Um, then number three was this thing here. What was that called? Sella Tursica. The Turkish saddle. And now we're going to the pelvis, right? So when you're looking at the pelvis, I said the big bump in the back of the butt. What was that? Posterior. Posterior superiliac spine, PSI. And then we also, in the front, we have an ASIS, or as you go to the Ikea section, you always look at the as is section because there's the goodies in there sometimes. At least when you have kids and you need to save the money. Um, and so the, the, I always reference that. So see the ASIS is here, the anterior superiliac spine. And then here it's easy to see the AIIS is this one down here, this bone. The anterior inferior iliac spine. And it, this is also an anatomy thing. If you have a superior of something, you gotta ask where's the inferior. Or you know there most likely is because otherwise they wouldn't have to say it. The whole thing here on the side, what's that? The acetabulum. The acetabulum. So that's where the femur goes in, the thigh bone. And then on the femur, I ask you next, what is this round thing on top of the femur? What's that? The head, the head of the femur. Good. So anything that's round and you don't remember, just put down head. It's going to be right, most likely. And then what about the bump on the side of the thigh? Greater trochanter. Greater trochanter. Greater you get what mixed up? Tubercle? The tubercle and the trochanter. Yeah, but see, you got to be careful too because, in, in, in yes, the tubercle is on the top, on the, on the, on the arm bone because they're smaller. Right, we have a greater tubercle and a lesser tubercle. In a hip, we have a greater trochanter and a lesser trochanter. You know, it's all sometimes they call this up here the trochanter in some textbooks. And I've never seen this called a tubercle. But the, tu the difference between a tubercle and a trochanter is the size. They're two bumps. They both mean bumps. And, and actually one of the things I should have in the booklet, but I never put in is, is Google, you know, the different body landmarks and see number eight, because I don't write them down. Number eight is the tibial, oh, what is number eight? Tibial tuberosity. Tibial tuberosity, great. And again, that's another word for bump. Tubercle, trochanter, tuberosity. Tuberosity is a very good word for any bump, if you have to guess. Or you had a medical report and you don't remember, just call it one of those. Oh, here's tibial trochanter with a little sore. They probably, they probably know what you mean. They might think you quite not know your terminology, but you know. All right, what's next? 
The scapula. So what is this called on the scapula? Spine. The spine of the scapula. So if you see that, you know you're in the back. That's on the back. All right? The bump, yeah, what was that? Anybody got that? That was a tricky one. Deltoid tuberosity. See, what? Huh? Number 10. Yeah, number 10. Deltoid tuberosity. And I think, was that the last one? No, the last one was the tip of the elbow. And what's the tip of the elbow? I love that word. Can hint, hint. If I love it, I'm going to be on the test. Olecranon process. Ole, electronome process, one of those great words that takes the time. All right, you guys did all right, huh? How are you feeling about this stuff? Is it helpful to do this? Talk about it? All right, good. So maybe next time we'll